Narcissist and Snared. Episode 12 Where are you? Are you near? Kiss, kiss, kiss. The text arrived, and Wynne glanced at us as he drove. He was only ten minutes away from Ashley's house. He responded, and confirmed that to be the case. Wynne was in good spirits, as they were spending another Sunday afternoon together, something which they had never been able to do when they were conducting their affair. Nearly two weeks had passed since Ashley had returned from her brother's house. They had continued to spend time together after work. It was brief, occasionally only allowing for one session of lovemaking, something Ashley always remained keen to do. Her time was restricted, as she was back at work and with Sarah away, her parents had taken over her duties with regard to the children. Ashley had not wished to take their assistance for granted, and therefore needed to reach home at a reasonable time each evening, thus reducing the availability for them to spend time together. However, she was now able to chat with him at length each night, unhindered by the glowering presence of Peter. What was reduced in one respect had become increased in another. Peter only wanted to see the children on a Sunday afternoon. The previous week, whilst he had had them, Ashley and he had taken his two nephews to an adventure playground in the depths of the countryside. Ashley had been great with the two boys, and had readily joined in with the activities. She seemed to enjoy the distraction. Now Peter had been to collect his children once again, and this would allow him and Ashley to head for lunch at a local pub and then go for a walk up in the hills together. He was looking forward to it. As ever, she instructed him to park at the Bridal Path car park and walk around the house. His boots crunched on the gravel as he exited the car park and made the short walk around to Ashley's house. She had left the front door ajar, and he walked in, seeing that she was in the kitchen living area. He walked in, and she held up her hand to him to indicate for him to be silent. He nodded, and leant against one of the units. "'Yes, I know, Mum, but he did it again. Every time he comes around here, he makes threats.' Ashley fell silent as she listened to what her mother was saying. "'I know, but he frightens me. "'Yes, I know I can, but I really don't want to get the police involved. "'No, Mum, don't you do it. I will. Leave it with me. "'I'm just shocked by it all. It leaves me shaking. "'Okay, okay, I will sort it out.' Yes, I'm just stunned. I really am. Look, I'd better go. Yes, yes, I will call them. Yes, bye-bye. She pressed a button and placed the landline handset down. What's going on? asked Wynne, concerned. Him again. What else? Why? What has he done this time? Well, you know how the arrangement is that he comes at one o'clock to collect the children, has them for the afternoon, and then brings them back at six? Wynne nodded. He turned up at eleven, didn't he? Just let himself in and breezed in. I asked him what he was doing, and he said it was his house too, and he could come and go when he wanted. Well, that is true, but his interest is purely financial now. He doesn't live here. He should respect the fact that it is over and stay away. Well, someone normal like you would see it that way, but not him, oh no. Anyway, he wandered in as I was changing Christopher and started saying how Christopher was Daddy's boy. Oh, I wanted to slap him. Then he starts up with haranguing me. Amelia is playing with Christopher on the playmat. Peter follows me from room to room and keeps having a go at me. What was he saying? Oh, the usual things. How nobody could love me the way that he did. How I have ruined everyone's lives. That I was given the world and I threw it away. He started on at me with the name-calling as well. I try to get away from him, but he just keeps walking after me, following me around. Sometimes he would just stand there and stare at me. He's disturbed. Wait, it gets worse. He follows me into the study and shuts the door behind him. He then pushes me down onto one of the chairs and pins me there, trying to kiss me. Good Lord, what did you do? I avoided his mouth on mine... But he managed to kiss my cheeks as I couldn't get away from him. He was too strong. I felt sicky and... Bastard. Then, 
he holds me down by the legs and says that I am his property and that he's coming back tonight to claim his property. What does he mean by that? He wants to have me, doesn't he? That's what he used to do when we were together. You need to call the police. That's an assault and it's threatening behaviour. Well, yes, my mum says I should call the police, but I'm frightened. She started to tremble. Wynne moved over to her and held her. Please. Can we just go? I, I cannot stand being here. I can see him stood there. Let's just get out and go and have some lunch. Half an hour later, they were sat at a corner table in a local pub which was very busy. The Honest Banker was a popular venue and the food had an excellent reputation. They had both ordered fish and chips and were eating as they talked. Wynne was pleased to note that as soon as they entered the pub, Ashley's demeanour had changed. The frightened, cowering woman had been cast aside and she seemed more relaxed and assured. When he had pointed this out to her, she replied, that's the effect you have on me. It doesn't take long. He was delighted to hear that. They avoided talking about the incident with Peter. Ashley had brushed it aside, stating that she didn't want him to spoil their afternoon, and so they had talked, as they always did, with enthusiasm and interest about a wide range of subjects. It never ceased to please Ian that she liked all of the things that he did. Once lunch was finished, they returned to Ashley's car, and drove to the petrol station in a nearby village where she asked Wynne to pay to fill up her car, as she had not brought her money with her. Once done, they had headed up into the nearby hills. As they climbed higher and higher, a light covering of snow appeared, and the landscape was white all around them. Wynne had no idea where he was, and Ashley was driving higher, taking various turnings into smaller lanes, until she parked up off the road, in between the trees. She leaned over from the driver's seat and kissed Wynne. I need you to make love to me, she said. Out there? I'll give it a try, but you know, it might be a bit cold for little Ian, he replied, glancing towards his crotch. No, in the back of here, she added, and indicated to the spacious interior of the 4 by 4 You haven't had me in here, have you? No, come on then. They jumped out and headed into the back. The lane behind them was deserted, and there was little chance of detection on this cold January day. Wynne was glad of the warmth of the vehicle, as the brief excursion outside had confirmed it was way too cold for alfresco lovemaking. That was hazardous in their country, even in the summer. How are we going to do this then? asked Wynne. It had been many years since he'd had sex in a car. In fact, it must easily have been a decade. Ashley leant across and began kissing him as she groped him. He responded, running his hands over her breasts, caressing them through her jumper. Sit down and pull down your pants, said Ashley, in between kisses. Wynne shifted around and did as she instructed. She reached for him and stroked him as he came free of his underwear. Wynne gave a throaty murmur of approval. They continued to kiss, and he rubbed at her through her tight black jeans. He could feel her warmth already, and she unbuttoned her pants, hauling them down, her white panties sliding down also. Ashley turned and held onto the front seats as she lured herself onto him. He grabbed hold of him and steered him into her. She groaned and then moved slightly, adjusting her position until she was able to take him inside. Oh, yes, muttered Wynne, as he felt himself becoming engulfed. The sensation delighted him, and she pushed down further, taking him inside. Oh, that's good, said Wynne. You're telling me, answered Ashley, as she began to move up and down, gripping onto the seats in front of her as she rode Wynne. Up and down she moved, letting out her own moans and noises of approval as Wynne thrust driving inside of her, as the two of them fucked. "'Tell me when you're going to come,' she instructed. "'I will,' grunted Wynne. 
She continued to writhe and buck on top of him, moving piston-like, until Wynne's guttural groans increased in volume. Oh, fuck, yes, yes, he said. Are you going to come for me? Mm Mm-hmm, yes, he announced. She hopped off him and shuffled to the side, her own pants about her ankles. I should have worn a skirt, she remarked, as she took hold of Wynne and began to stroke him. He tilted his head back. He cried out, and Ashley let out a delighted gasp at his climax. She continued to move her hand, coaxing more from him. Her eyes were wide as she marvelled at how heavy his ejaculation had been. That was a lot. I know, I felt it, smiled Wynne. He looked about and saw the dripping residue of his orgasm about the leather of the car. Let's hope Peter doesn't drive this car again, then, he remarked, nodding his head at the mess. I would rather like him to, actually, said Ashley, as she reached for a packet of baby wipes and pulled several free. She began to clean the car. Ah, what about me? asked Wynne, looking at himself. Here, she said, and passed him some wipes. Wynne attended to himself as Ashley mopped up, and then pulled her pants back up. She kissed him and licked his lips. That was wonderful. I've never done it in this car before, she said. Really? Really? I have such an intense orgasm. I think it was the thought that we might get seen. I loved it. We can go for a walk and then you can do it to me again when we get back. If you're recovered enough, of course. Don't worry about that, said Wynne. They walked amongst the hills for about an hour. The air was cold and fresh, and it was pleasant. Just the two of them, high above the surrounding land as they emerged from walking through a forest. Wynne took a number of photographs of Ashley as she walked ahead of him, wearing an expensive outdoor jacket and gloves. Since the turn of the year, she had been happy for him to take pictures of her, and he frequently did so. She was photogenic, and he captured her wonderful smile repeatedly. He had built up a decent catalogue of pictures saved in his iCloud, and he liked to look at them, flicking them across his iPad when they were apart. A number had been taken at his house. Some were when they went to the adventure playground, others in his car when they sat by the riverside having lunch in the week, and now more as they walked through the trees. Dusk was falling, and she had stood before a number of trees smiling at him, eyes alive with happiness as he took several pictures of her. "'How do they look?' she had asked. "'Beautiful,' he had replied, and they were. She had skipped over and peered at them, swiping across his phone and examining each one and giving a nod of, pro- nod of approval. "'Yes, I like those. I look good. You always look good. That's because you make me feel good, Ian. Nobody has done that for me before.' They had returned to the car, and arrived just in time as the darkness had descended, and would have made finding their way along the rutted tracks through the forest difficult. They made love again in the back of the car, in a similar fashion to before, although this time she had made him finish differently. It was only as they had left the hills that her mood changed again, and the apprehension surrounded her. It really was as if she had been transported far away from her troubles, and as soon as she crossed a boundary to be near the house, she was reminded of what had happened earlier that day. "'Are you all right?' asked Wynne, as he looked across at Ashley. "'I feel sick. Look, I'll stay with you. I'm not having him hurt you. You haven't told the police either. I know. It is is I know how he operates, and look, I can keep him at bay.' "'Are you sure of that, Ashley? "'He had you where you wanted you earlier. "'Yes, I'll keep Amelia near me. "'That'll frustrate him, and he'll go eventually. "'Promise me that you will call the police "'if he starts anything, anything at all. "'I will. "'Good.' "'The pair fell silent, and Wynne alternated his gaze "'from the dark countryside beyond the car "'to the hollow expression that Ashley now wore.' 
as they drew closer to her home. Eventually they returned to the car park. I will come straight back if you need me. Call the police if he causes any trouble, repeated Wynne. I know, I will. If he hurts you, I swear I'll have him. I'll be okay. It will be okay. Look, you better go, just in case he decides to come back early. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Thank you for a lovely afternoon. My pleasure. Wynne climbed down from the car and closed the door. Ashley tried to smile at him, but her nervousness was written large over her face. She reversed her car and gave him a short wave as she pulled out of the car park just to go around the corner to her house. Wynne stood in the cold, his breath clouding, as he pondered what lay ahead in the next hour or so for Ashley at the hands of the abuser. <laughs>